What's this supposed to be? It's supposed to be a rent a robot or something. I guess automation is good for us. I'm not gonna automate, too complex. I'm not gonna automate, cause it takes too long. I'm not gonna automate, too expensive. I have an idea, let's get Mikey to automate it. He likes anything. Automation can be time-consuming, complex, and expensive. And robot graveyards fill the corners of manufacturing facilities across America. Despite that, 80% of manufacturers say that they're planning to do some sort of automation implementation this year. Well, automation doesn't necessarily mean automatic ROI. I see what you did there. Well, robotics as a service is a game-changing technology, and we have the case study to prove it. This is Smarter Shop. My name is Ryan Kelly. I'm a manufacturing and supply chain technologist for AMT. My job is to get tech into industry faster. Today, we're solving manufacturing challenges with bite-sized solutions. Give us 10 minutes and we'll give you a smarter shop. We're here in Livermore, California at the manufacturing facility of Topcon Positioning Systems. Topcon is a leading global manufacturer of positioning systems for the construction and agricultural equipment industries. Joining us today is Nick Keyes from Raptor Robotics, a solution provider that helped Topcon implement robotics as a service. Hey Nick. Hey Ryan. Good to see you. Hey Nick. Tell us what's going on here. Yeah, let me show you all. Final inspection of this antenna is giving Topcon all sorts of headaches. They have to locate each of these barcodes with sub-millimeter precision which takes an operator a long time to do. Two operators were taking upwards of five minutes to inspect this kind of placement, whereas we have batches of six or 10 coming through the solution here in less than a minute. That's great. It looks like, you know, because humans are great at recognizing patterns, but lousy yet repetitive tasks over and over again. It looks like the vision system can help with that for this application. Exactly, exactly. Each part that comes through is having multiple points looked at simultaneously instead of errors that a human could make by looking at each individually. So let's look at Topcon's setup here. We're at a general electronics facility and you have small batches of, in this case, six parts running through at a time. And Topcon runs this part at only hundreds or so of parts a month, uh, generally low volume, which is your typical low volume, high mix environment, which makes it quite hard to automate. Correction, used to be hard to automate, right? Because the one thing I really like about this system is just uh, how easily it was for them to implement this. And correct me if I'm wrong, but if Topcon decided to add some additional product numbers to this same cell, that would be relatively easy to do, correct? Exactly, right. Yeah, this is really just a six axis arm, all off the shelf components around it, easily implementable on the floor and um, rolled in as a solution. The actual vision task of the camera looking at multiple points is an easy solution as long as the parts place repeatedly, which the robot takes care of. And these cameras themselves are uh, elementary cameras which offer an ML-based inspection and a no-code solution. Now, while there's some really cool tech behind the scenes here, one thing that's really remarkable about Rapid Robotics is the robotics as a service business model, which is a OpEx as opposed to a CapEx model, and it addresses some of the main pain points of robotics implementations. For example, you don't need to hire additional robot operators or programmers, and the lead times are a lot shorter. Whereas typical lead times might be six to nine months for a traditional robotics implementation, uh, Rapid Robotics is, is much quicker than that. That's definitely right. The six to nine months is for the off-the-shelf components alone sometimes, let alone the, the deployment of the unit or the implementation. Um, the type of 
lead times we're talking about with something like this is gonna be more on the order of weeks, four to six weeks or so. And let's take a look at the big one, cost. A typical CapEx expenditure for an integration such as these would be over six figures. But taking it to a more of an OpEx model, it makes the cost much more manageable for your customers. It's the right way to think about it. It's a lower barrier to entry. So you have something like $2,500 to $2,900 a month to pay for this, rather than that large CapEx expenditure you talked about. It's remarkable. So like on a daily basis, it's like a casual lunch for two people. Exactly. All right, Nick, tell us a little bit about the return on investment that TopCon saw after the system was up and running. Yeah, for this system, they saw immediate return on investment. They didn't actually pay until the system was operational and the inspection process was complete. Because of that and the fact that they didn't have to pay upfront CapEx and they paid monthly, they saw immediate return on investment for their operator expense or operator savings. Additional to that, they have 100% yield on this part in the inspection process and no parts have been returned to the customer since this implementation. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. So what are we looking at here, Ryan? Well, we're back at the Rapid Robotics headquarters and Nick is gonna give us a demonstration of Rapid's smart setup. All right, so Nick is walking up to the robot and you can see that he actually just put uh, a little tray down and it's got uh, what's called a fiducial. So that QR code, it basically gives the robot's instructions of the tasks that he wants the robot to, to perform. It, it, the interface from robot to fiducial is, is a vision system, I take it. Yeah, that's right. Just the cameras, they're sort of looking up uh, over the work area at the top. So it's looking like it's scanning those fiducials and now the robot looks like it knows exactly what to do. Yeah, it gets to work and it's orienting itself based on where that fiducial is within the work area. So it really is not important where Nick puts that. So it doesn't have to be a really accurate placement of the robot. No, awesome. that's right. Okay, now Nick's moving this whole, the whole cell over to another location and it's, it's like there's different operations we got to convey here now. Let's yeah, on. exactly. So he's just really just shifted the robot from one work area to another. You can do it the opposite way. You could move new things to the work okay. area. You can see there's some different fiducials there. Right. That's giving the robot instructions about what Nick wants the robot to perform next. So different judicials, different robot operations, you know, they have to be super accurate with placement, and then it just goes. There wasn't actually not much that Nick had to do. I mean, I think he hit one button yeah. on that uh, on that tablet. That's remarkable. I mean, that, that kind of flexibility, I think, is what is gonna make it a lot easier for these shops to automate. Yeah, that's yeah, that's definitely right. I mean, I think a lot of small, medium-sized manufacturing companies think that if they're gonna bring robotics in, it's gonna take a lot of additional training for their staff. But you can see by this example that that's really not not true. This is something that would be easy to add to the workload of a five axis operator or uh, really anybody working on the shop. Yeah, floor. I mean, the skills that those people have is probably, you know, it's much harder, I think, to run a five axis machining center than it is to set up something like this. This is, this is great. Yeah, and I think, you know, another thing to note that in this robotics as a service model, the programming, uh, this is not done by the actual end customer. This is done by the solution provider, in this case, Rapid Robotics. So if you want to take on a new task, all you do is you reach out to Rapid and say, here's a new thing that I want to automate. And basically then you can forget about the bill of materials and the typical things that you would normally do for a traditional automation implementation. You touch on a good point. That kind of support is paramount for getting it set up, right? But you know what's going to happen. It's a machine. It's going to break. Things are going to fail. And having that support model from Rapid, I think, makes this even better for, for a customer to integrate and then automate. It's awesome. Yeah, that's right. You know, Ryan, I actually started tallying up a bill of materials for what it would take to integrate a robot cell like this. I mean, you're looking at 20 grand here, 40 grand there. Before you know it, we're over six figures. Well, that's pretty typical, but you know what? With robotics as a service, you can forget the bill of materials. Rent the robot. Topcon, like a lot of companies, was evaluating automation, thinking about it for a long time before they found robotics as a service. And I think that there's three lessons that we can take away from that visit. Exactly, Ryan. The first step is to automate now. The sooner you get started, the better. It's gonna help with skills gaps, labor shortages that will come up in your business, and honestly, your competitors are already there. You already brought up that second point, which is when you automate, that's gonna free up your skilled labor, hard to find skilled labor, and allow you to put them where they're gonna be most valuable. Absolutely, you wanna start by picking the right application. Take a look at your business, find out where those pain points are, and apply automation to those areas. And I think it's important to pick an easy win. You don't wanna automate an entire line. You wanna pick something that Upon success, you can prove it to the company, your management team that, hey, automation works, and then you can do more. And remember, every time you automate something, you're just moving that bottleneck down the line. You gotta go step by step. Precisely, I mean, people look at automation as a complex solution, so they say, hey, let's give this complex solution to our most complex problem. That's not always the best way. Oftentimes, you wanna go for the easiest problems, get those early wins, and then build confidence and move forward from there. This automation piece, it's a journey. 
Like any road, there are potholes, but hopefully this episode makes your journey a little bit smoother to a smarter and more automated shop. 